प्लीज फॉलो आफ्टर मी नो देती नास्तमेषा नो देती नास्तमेषा न वृद्धि याति न क्षय न वृद्धि याति न क्षय स्वयं विभाथान्यानी स्वयं विभाथान्यानी भाषेत साधन विना This consciousness within, this consciousness within, ever shining, no day. It's a comparison is with the sun. It does not rise. We every day we experience sunrise and sunset. The the sun of consciousness never rises, never sets, eternally shining. No day ti na astame ti. Neither it rises, neither does it set. always shining there is a similar verse in the panchadashi where it says days pass months pass consciousness shines years pass the body grows old dies consciousness watches shines the ages roll past thousands of years life after life comes and goes consciousness unchanging watches so are we not unconscious in sleep this whole idea of your consciousness always shining i remember right here in this hall last year um, i gave a talk from panchadashi and there was this young girl who had come from canada with her parents and she asked this question before the class that this whole idea of yours having unchanging consciousness well in deep sleep when we fall asleep there's no consciousness so doesn't it break down there let alone ages passing and death and uh, many thousands of years passing and consciousness shining none of that every day we fall asleep and we are unconscious consciousness is switched off where is consciousness well that's where indian philosophy ventures to disagree that in deep sleep also this consciousness is there the difference between deep sleep and this state is here consciousness has some object to be aware of in deep sleep there is nothing to be aware of there is no world for us remember this is a subjective approach so we are talking about your experience or my experience don't say that in deep sleep swami what do you mean that there is no world there is no body there is no mind we can see the fellow sleeping and snoring so how come there is no body no body that's we are taking an objective look from outside but what is that person's experience what is your experience in deep sleep what is my experience my experience is that i have no experience of the world i have no experience of the body the sense organs i have no experience of the mind thoughts feelings emotions i have no experience of myself as reflecting upon my own existence and yet they say consciousness is there there is nothing for it to be aware of it's just consciousness i remember there was a debate between um, Uh, 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 philosopher, philosophers and scientists in the Institute of Culture in Gold Park several years ago in Calcutta, and they came to this point. They couldn't agree upon the definition of consciousness. So finally, somebody asked the neuroscientist, "Doctor, in neuroscience, in deep sleep, is there consciousness or not? From your scientific point of view?" And the scientist stood up and said, "The way we define consciousness, there is no consciousness in deep sleep. There is no consciousness in deep sleep." And the philosopher. a sankhyan philosopher who is also an american professor larson he stood up and said well from the indian philosophy point of view vedanta or sankhya point of view in deep sleep there is only consciousness see this is the difference <laughs> in deep sleep there is no consciousness and deep sleep there is only consciousness consciousness without having an object to be aware of so consciousness is still there in deep sleep mystics were aware of this is reading a, a christian mystic such a beautiful uh, uh, you know the beautiful language he says just like in deep space the blackness of space in deep space we think it's black dark it's actually full of light in near the sun it's full of light there is nothing for the, uh, nothing to reflect the light so it appears to be completely dark similarly in a deep deep sleep consciousness is there but there is nothing to reflect consciousness nothing for consciousness to be aware of uh why can i not recognize myself during the deep sleep why 
what is your experience in deep sleep? Nothing is there. What is it that is aware that there is nothing there in deep sleep? It's the waking state afterwards that it retrospects and looks at the clock and sees that physical time has passed. The sun rose. You mean to say that when you wake up in the morning, you have to check your clock first before the, you before you know you have slept deeply? No. No. So what is it that enables you to know that you have slept deeply? When somebody asks you at breakfast, did you sleep well? Hopefully you say yes. To what experience do you refer? Well, I find myself in a do, bed. <laughs> do, you answer that, do you answer that question? When someone asks you, did you sleep well, do you say, I'm not sure or I don't know? No. You say hopefully yes. And that yes must refer to an experience of sleeping well, which means sleeping deeply. So to what experience do you refer when you answer the question, did you sleep well? Yes. The experience of uh, absence of objects of perception. What is it that has the experience, given that awareness is the prerequisite for experience, what is it that has the experience of the absence of objects? What is it that can say, there are no objects present? What is it that knows that experience? In other words, is deep sleep the absence of awareness or the awareness of absence? You presume that it is the absence of awareness, but are you sure that it is not the awareness of absence? If it were the absence of awareness, you would not be able to answer the question, did you sleep well, with an absolute clear yes. The reason you answer the question, did you sleep well, with yes, is because it was your experience that in deep sleep you were all alone by yourself. You, awareness, were all alone by yourself. And because you were all alone by yourself, it was peaceful there. No thoughts, no images, no activities and no relationships. Do you look forward to going to sleep at night? Oh yeah. Why? I think do, do you feel that you are approaching non-existence or annihilation? Uh, no, if end you of did. Suffering. <laughs> when? Approach end of suffering of you, the day. <laughs> what, you, what, what is the common? What is the common name for the end of suffering or the absence of suffering? Peace. Peace or happiness. Perfect. That's what you experience when you are deeply asleep, and that's why you look forward to deep sleep because you long for happiness above all else. And if, if we cannot find happiness in the waking state, deep sleep is nature's way of giving everyone a taste of their true nature. Well, that's what you experience when you're deeply asleep. In other words, in deep sleep, you do know yourself. Your original question was, how come I don't know myself when I'm deeply asleep? On the contrary, when you're deeply asleep, you do know your essential nature of peace and happiness. That is precisely why you look forward to falling asleep at night. If deep sleep was the absence of awareness, it would be tantamount to death. It would be annihilation. You would fear it. You would dread deep sleep. You would resist deep sleep because you would feel that you were going to your death. You don't. You, you look forward to deep sleep precisely because you are all alone there with yourself and it is peaceful there. So you do know yourself. You know yourself in deep sleep as you essentially are. You know your nature of peace and happiness. Now when the waking state appears, that your essential nature of peace and happiness does not disappear. It is simply eclipsed by your thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions. It does not vanish. It is veiled. 
by, let's just call it, thoughts and perceptions. It is not necessary to get rid of the thoughts and perceptions in order to have access to your essential nature of peace and happiness. It is simply necessary to cease giving objective experience permission to veil your own being and its innate peace. It's like watching a movie and ceasing to give permission to the movie to veil the screen. As soon as you withdraw that permission, you see the screen. In fact, you were always seeing the screen, but you did not know you were seeing the screen. You are always aware of yourself and your innate peace and happiness, but you are not always aware that you are aware of yourself because you have allowed your knowledge of yourself to become mixed with the content of experience and thus you do not know yourself as you are. That's why you look forward to deep sleep at night because you long to know yourself as you are. You see we have such a strong conditioning to believe that deep sleep is a state that lasts in time. Mm -hmm. That's what the waking state mind says about deep sleep. Mm -hmm. Because from the point of view of the waking state mind, the waking state takes place in time. So when thought thinks of deep sleep, during which it was not present, mm -hmm. so it cannot know anything about deep sleep because it wasn't there, but it, ma it conceives of deep sleep in the terms in which it conceives the waking state. So thought says the waking state lasts for six hours, therefore, or, or let, sorry, for, for, um, for 20 hours, and therefore deep sleep must last for four hours. We don't actually have an experience of deep sleep lasting for four, four hours. It, it is our experience that deep sleep doesn't last in time. The moment we fall asleep is the moment we, we, we wake up. However, we don't trust that experience. We trust, strangely, what the waking state mind says about deep sleep, although deep sleep is precisely defined as the absence of the waking state mind. Mm -hmm. So you say that you have the experience of moments when, or periods of time when awareness is not present. So just tell us about those, those periods of time in which there is no awareness. It's not that I have an experience of awareness not being present. It's that I know when I wake up, I have recollections of awareness before I went to sleep, and then there's a gap. What is it that says there is a gap? Thought. Yes, if you like. Okay. Now, where was thought during that gap? It there, was were, there were no thoughts in that gap. It was, was by definition, thought was absence because mm -hmm. the gap is precisely, the gap is defined precisely as an absence of thought. Yes. Yes. Now, the yes. waking state thought then tells us about what took place in the gap. It wasn't there. How can thought tell us anything about a place in which it wasn't present? Well, it, I don't think it can. I no. know it can't. There's sometimes awareness with objects. Yes. And sometimes awareness without objects. Yes. But we cannot remember, the mind cannot remember or recollect the times when there is awareness without objects because the mind can only know or remember an object. So the mind says yeah. there was nothing there yeah. in deep sleep because all the mind knows are objects. I've got so you. in its own language, yeah. the mind says there was nothing there. There was nothing there from the point of view of a mind that only thinks there are things called objects.
But if we don't rely on what the mind says, mm -hmm. and we rely on, one, on the one that is truly knows about our experience, which is awareness, we get a very different picture. Now, if you ask yourself the question, do I, awareness, ever have the experience of the absence of myself, or the discontinuity mm -hmm. of myself? And go back to your experience mm -hmm. now. Do you ever have the experience of the absence of awareness? No. That's it. That mm -hmm. no yeah. comes from absolute certainty. I yeah. have never had the experience of the absence of awareness. Because if I, ha if I do claim the absence of experience as an experience, something must have been there mm. to witness it. What would that something be? It would be awareness. Nobody has ever had or could ever have the experience of the absence or discontinuity of awareness. It is only thought that can, and thought can only know an apparent object. So it is thought. So in other words, thought ignores awareness. Thought says there is nothing in deep sleep. There is no thing in deep sleep. It's just void. It's just blank. There's nothing there. But that's only because it cannot know awareness. Actually, deep sleep is full of awareness. But there is no thing there to be known. And hence, thought cannot recollect it. That's, that, was the, that was the key difficulty I had discriminating between I understand it now. Okay, well, my experience in deep sleep okay. is I actually don't, have never experienced deep sleep. It's it just that I know of. It's just okay. uh, I go to bed. I experience dreaming, I experience the waking state, and then there's this other that gets spoken of. Okay. But I've never, that I'm aware of, had an experience of deep sleep. And that's where I want to clarify what, what how, this that we ultimately are, that I am ultimately am, how does it, how do I know that it experiences itself in deep sleep? Just ask yourself the question in a slightly different way. Ask yourself the question, have I ever experienced the disappearance of awareness? Well, in, in true awareness, as I experience it, when I'm really aware that I am aware, yes, when I get caught in the mind, I no, no, experience but, but even, that, let's say, when you're caught in the mind, when I talk about awareness, I'm, I'm talking very simply, not about a kind of extraordinary awareness. Or, or I'm talking just simply about the knowing with which you know your current experience. Th this experience, th this experience of sights and sounds and sensations is known by you. I agree. And now this experience is known. And this experience is known. In fact, all experience is known. Now, what is the knowing with which it is known? What is it that knows experience? The I. What, what, that's what we call I, the, the knowing element right. in all experience. Thoughts disappear, sensations disappear, perceptions disappear, but the knowing with which you knew your thoughts two minutes ago is, is present now knowing this experience. Right. The thoughts that you had two minutes ago have gone, but the knowing with which they were known remains. Right. And the thoughts that you had two weeks ago and two months ago and two decades ago and whatever experience you had when you were five years old, ten years old, twenty years old, that experience was known. Yes? Now the knowing with which your entire experience is known is this knowing that is present now, knowing this experience. 
Yeah, that knowing is the the stable element, the continuous element. Yes. Yeah. Now, ask yourself. So the reason I say that is to to show you that this this awareness that is spoken of is something is something so familiar. It's so intimate and so ordinary. Yes, it, it's it's your it's 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 tangible. It, it's the knowing with which you know everything. Now, ask yourself: Have you ever experienced a break in the continuity of that knowing? Has it ever been interrupted? Did it ever stop and then start? Not that I've experienced. Well, what are you going to? trust. You, your experience says no, there has never been a break in that knowing. So why, why not trust that? I can for dreaming and awaking because well, I've never had the experience of knowing deep sleep. That's why you I have had the experience of knowing knowing. Exactly. Have you ever not no, had I the haven't. experience of knowing knowing? No, exactly. Therefore, it is your experience that the knowing of knowing is continuous. If if you stay simply with your experience, you admit, yes, th there's never been a break in it. Right. Then you remember what it says in the books and what everybody else says about this thing called deep sleep. Right. So you bring an idea which most people share a conventional idea, a common sense idea, to bear on your experience. And it makes you doubt your experience yeah. and to trust the belief, the common sense. Do you know, what, do you know how Einstein defined common sense? Yeah. A series of prejudices that most people acquire by the age of 18. <laughs> Trust your experience. That's good. You have never experienced a break in this knowing. Now, when I say you have never experienced a break in this knowing, the you that I'm referring to is this knowing. So yes. what I'm really saying is that if you ask the knowing, don't ask thought, but if you ask the knowing with which thought is known, what is your experience of yourself? Yeah. If knowing could speak, it would say, in my own experience of myself, I am ever-present. I have never known myself to disappear. To disappear. That's good. The world disappears. The world leaves me. But I never leave myself. The mind leaves me. Thoughts and feelings leave me. The body leaves me. I've experienced a discontinuity of thought every time a thought comes to an end. or A sensation comes to an end. You close your eyes, a perception comes to an end. So the mind, the body and the world are always coming to an end and then starting again. But the knowing with which they are known, which is what we call I, never comes to an end. The first thing we have to deal with is what happens in deep sleep. And this is what I struggled with as a young student. Because we all have the experience in deep sleep of being unconscious. And then, when we wake up, we have the experience of becoming conscious again. So... All of us have the experience of losing consciousness and regaining consciousness, which is absolutely contrary to what this text says. Na udeti, it doesn't rise. Na astam eti, nor does it set, nor does it go away. How can we reconcile this? There's a common explanation that's given, actually in many Vedanta commentaries, an explanation which in my view is inadequate. The usual explanation given is, when you wake up, you know that you slept. That's the usual explanation. When you wake up, you know that you slept. So it means you must have been present to know that you were 
sleeping. This is given in so many Vedanta books, and this is what really made me struggle as a young student. It's logically incorrect. When you wake up, you, do you know for a fact that you slept? While you were in deep sleep, you weren't having any experience. That's our definition of deep sleep, right? Deep sleep, dreamless sleep, is a condition of no experience, unconsciousness. But this common, common explanation says, when you wake up, you know that you didn't experience anything. <laughs> you know that there was an absence of experience, and therefore... You must have been conscious of the absence of experience. I see eyes glazing over. <laughs> because it turns out, and it's okay, it turns out it, it's a complex issue and it's a logical fallacy. It's any, any freshman in a logic class can actually dismiss that, that kind of argument. One of the basic rules of logic is you can't argue on absences, on negatives. And this is a common logical fallacy. That's what you learn in a college classroom. This is not a college classroom. We'll set that aside. Just suffice it to say that when you hear that argument, it turns out to be logically invalid. Consciousness is often called, and we're going to be introducing some technical vocabulary here, which are really important terms to understand what is consciousness. This consciousness, in this uh, first line, we're going to discover how it is avastha traya sakshi. At least there's one word that's familiar there. Sakshi, observer, witness. Witness of three things. What are those three things? Three avastha, three states of experience. Those three states of experience are jagrat, which is waking state, swapna, which is the uh, uh, dream state, and shupti, which is the deep sleep state. So, this is one of the extremely important topics in Vedanta. There's one Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad, which is dedicated to this one topic. Think about it. The whole Upanishad is a short one, but this is the main topic for that particular Upanishad. Now, what does it mean to be the Jagrat Avastha Sakshi, the observer of whatever happens while you're awake? Big deal. That you know very well. You're observing whatever is happening right now in the room. Good. That's nothing surprising. Now, what happens in the evening? You go to bed, and you sleep, and you dream. Now, here's an interesting question. The one who observes your waking experience in Jagrat Avastha, and the one who observes your dreams in Swapna Avastha, are they different? What is your experience? Your experience says you are the same observer of whatever happens while you're awake. You are the same observer of whatever happens when you're dreaming. It's not that there are two different observers. The same Sakshi Chaitanya. Okay, that part is easy. Now comes the interesting bit, as they say. Many people are convinced that this consciousness ceases to exist during deep sleep, dreamless sleep, sushupti avastha. There are many that contend, in fact, many, many of the scientists who are trying to, to prove, unsuccessfully prove, that consciousness is a product of brain activity, they, they, they get stuck with this problem, and we're going to deal with this problem right now. Are you conscious in deep sleep? Now, consider the experience of deep sleep. How do you consider? What is there to consider? In deep sleep, what do you experience? 
The answer, of course, is nothing. In deep sleep, you experience absolutely nothing. Now, there are two ways of interpreting your experience of nothing. This is Vedanta. Vedanta is so wonderful that you can start with nothing and have a very interesting discussion. <laughs> We're going to have a very, very interesting discussion of about nothing right now. More specifically about your experience of nothing in deep sleep. There are two possibilities. One possibility is you, as Sakshi Chaitanya, cease to exist. That would explain the absence of experience. The other possibility, the other way of interpreting it, is you, as Sakshi Chaitanya, were absolutely present, but there was nothing to observe. Two very different explanations. One possibility is Sakshi Chaitanya, consciousness, ceased to exist. The second possibility is Sakshi Chaitanya, consciousness, remained in deep sleep, but there was nothing to observe. And just to make sure that second one, first one is, is, is a little bit, let's see, the first, we, we need metaphors. I love metaphors. So the first metaphor, that is, in deep sleep, consciousness ceases to exist. The metaphor that aptly describes this, you love this metaphor, it's like the light bulb in your refrigerator. <laughs> I like this. Because when you close the door, the light bulb goes out. In the same way, when you close your eyes and drift off into deep sleep, the light bulb goes out. Now, before we proceed, one thing I like about that, that drishtanta, that metaphor, is are you absolutely sure the light bulb goes out? <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> you know? You can presume it goes out, and probably it goes out, but there's some room for doubt, correct? There's some room for doubt. There's a possibility that that light could remain on. All right, just hold it as a possibility. So, that your consciousness ceases during sushupti avastha, deep sleep, is explained by this light bulb in your refrigerator. We need another drishtanta for the second possibility. Second possibility is that you remain conscious in deep sleep, but there's nothing to observe. The metaphor for that is standing in a dark closet. And I mean utterly dark, not a bit of light peeking into that closet. So dark that you can't see your hand in front of your face, that kind of absolute darkness. Imagine now standing in that black, dark closet with your eyes wide open. What do you see? Nothing. Do you see? Do you have the power of sight? That's the point. You have the power of sight in that dark closet, but there's nothing to be seen at all. That's the second possibility, the second possibility that says in deep sleep, so shupti avastha, you are absolutely conscious, as conscious as you are now, but there's nothing to be observed because your mind has ceased to function. The question is in deep sleep, is it consciousness that ceases to function or your mind that ceases to function? So we've developed these two possibilities. Now, which is it? Can you determine from your own experience? And this is where it gets tricky. Is your own experience sufficient to determine which of these is correct? And to, make, and to go back to the second analogy, imagine being in that black closet, dark closet, with your eyes wide open, could you prove that you have the power of sight or not while you're in that blackness? Is there any way to prove that your eyes still work? Is there any way to prove that you haven't gone blind? There's no way in that moment that you're in there. 
what the point I'm making is that experience alone isn't quite enough to resolve this problem. Fortunately, Vedanta draws upon three sources of guidance, not one. Three sources, you may have heard this before, Shruti, Yukti, Anubhava. We've talked about this in other Vedanta classes before. Shruti, Yukti, Anubhava. Anubhava is experience, the last of them. But that Anubhava or experience is accompanied by two more things. Middle one is Yukti, reasoning. And the first one is Shruti, scripture. We use Shruti, scripture, Yukti, logic, reasoning, and Anubhava to establish truth. If you hold on to only one or two of those, it's insufficient, it's not stable. The metaphor that's given again and again is that of a table. What are the minimum number of legs that a table requires to be stable? You can't have a (laughs) one-legged table, nor a two-legged table. Three legs are stable. Trying to understand this problem of deep sleep, our experience isn't enough. We must bring in reasoning and scripture, and that's what we're going to do now. What I'm going to share with you is a story, like a a made-up story, um, based on Shruti and uh, scripture and employing Yukti reasoning. And here goes the story. Suppose we are all plunged suddenly into utter darkness. Be very strange, wouldn't it? I suppose the power could go out. Suppose the power went out, and suppose also all the windows were blacked out, so not a trace of light entered this room. But suppose we don't even know for sure that the power got black, uh, was, was out. All we know is that all of us, we suddenly are plunged into darkness. A hundred of us are suddenly plunged into darkness. How shall we explain it? Well, there are two possibilities. Same two that we just discussed. One possibility is that we all simultaneously went blind. Hey, that's a valid explanation, is it not? Would it not explain our experience? It's a perfect explanation for our experience. But that's one of two possibilities. One possibility is we all simultaneously went blind. Other possibility, of course, is lights went out. Now, as we sit here in darkness, can we figure out which it is? While we're in the darkness, is there any way we can find out which happened? Not while we're in the darkness. There's no way of knowing. But suppose, after five minutes, we can all see again. (laughs) How shall we explain that? Once again, two possibilities. (laughs) One possibility is all hundred of us regained our eyesight at exactly the same time. That's one possibility. The other possibility, of course, is the power came on, the lights came back on. Now, you're, you're, this is starting to make some sense, right? There are two possibilities, but one is extremely unlikely to the point of being ridiculous, and the other makes much more sense. This is yukti. So using, we already did anubhava, experience. Now we're dealing with yukti. According to yukti, one possibility is far more likely than another. Consider your experience of deep sleep. Look at this. You are conscious of every little thing that happens throughout the day. How many thoughts go on in your mind in a given day Thousands and thousands. Every one of those thoughts is observed by Sakshi Chaitanya. It remains utterly present all the way through the day. Then in dream, you have how many crazy dreams each night? We may not remember them, but they keep coming and going. All kinds of strange things flirt in and out of our minds as we sleep. And whatever comes into your mind in sleep, you are aware of every little thing. You are conscious of all of that. You witness all of it. So look at this. While you're awake in Jagra Ravasta, 
you witness thousands and thousands of events every millisecond you're observing. And in dream, every millisecond you're observing what's happening in your in dream. So you've been the conscious observer through hours and hours of waking and hours and hours of, of uh, dream, and then suddenly, click, consciousness turns off. Like your refrigerator light bulb. <laughs> Doesn't sound reasonable, correct? Your consciousness seems to have a quality of persistence. It doesn't come and go in terms of your experience while you're awake and while you're dreaming. So wouldn't it make sense, logically, yukti, to presume that your consciousness persists in deep sleep? This isn't proof. All we're doing, we've used anubhava, we've considered two, two possibilities. Yukti establishes that it's much more likely that your consciousness remains utterly present during deep sleep. And we have to use the third leg of our table, Shruti, Yukti, Anubhava. Thousands of scriptures, thousands of enlightened rishis have all declared without a shadow of question in their minds, your consciousness doesn't blink in and out of existence. Their perspective is this. This consciousness, Sakshi, Sakshi Chaitanya, is you. It's the core of your being. It's the essence of your existence. Does it make sense to say that you exist except for a few hours in deep sleep? Every night in deep sleep, you blink out of existence for a little while. To the ancient rishis, this was ridiculous. The essence of who you are, the core of your being, cannot be something so trivial like the light bulb in your refrigerator. If it's the truth of who you are, it's an abiding truth that doesn't blink on and out. So here, using shruti, yukti, and anubhava, we establish absolutely that not only is your consciousness persistent, but that you are as conscious in deep sleep as you are right now. Very important. That's what our first line says. Na udeti, it doesn't arise when you wake up in the morning. Na astam eti, nor does it set when you fall into deep sleep. By the way, na udeti also means it doesn't arise when you get born. And na astameti also means it doesn't go away when you die. Again, we're talking about the essence of your being. Your body is one thing. Bodies come and go. Bodies are physical. Bodies are transient. Also the subtle body, sukshma sharira, is also transient. Fine. Let them be transient. They come and go but the essence of who you are is not transient. It doesn't come and go. Therefore, Sakshi Chaitanya precedes birth and persists after death. That much we've established. <laughs>